Welcome to Making Democracy Work. This is a monthly series on topics of community interest brought to you by the League of Women Voters of Honolulu. Today, our topic is going to be affordable housing on the island of Kauai and a unique opportunity which is right on the horizon right now. We have with us Joanne Yukimura, who was mayor of, Ka of mayor of the Kauai County from 1988 to 1994 and served on the Kauai Council for a total of 22 years. Welcome, Joanne, and thank you for coming. And my co-host, Kawi Lucas, I'm Pearl Johnson with the League of Women Voters. So in addition to your rather impressive uh, public service, you also have ties with the League of Women Voters, I hear? Well, I used to be a member, and I think the primary reason I was a member was my mother was a core member of the League on Kauai, and she raised me in that <laughs> mindset that if you're a citizen, you have, to, um, you, you have to be aware and involved politically. So it was natural when I came back from law school to join the League of Women Voters. <laughs> of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. So can you tell us what's happening with um, the affordable housing crisis and its evil twin homelessness on Kauai? Well, I would say that the scarcity of affordable homes is the biggest challenge facing the island today because it's affecting so many people so many things and really causing a lot of suffering uh, um, from the homeless child who is growing up without any security or stability to families that are two or three in one house, not because they want to, but because that's the only way they can live and work on Kauai, um, to the employer who is really strapped for employees and yet one employee is leaving because they can't, they've been kicked out of where they live and they can't find a place to live, to families that are spending much more than 50% of their income. And still, um, it's for you know, such inadequate housing. And yet, you've um, brought to our attention, there's this opportunity, there's this, this incident of, of, of affordable housing, something that the county actually did a while ago, actually created some affordable housing, and now it's really in jeopardy. It's kind of a complicated story, but we're really glad you came over and are going to uh, walk us through it. So please explain to us what, what, the, what is happening, the situation with Waipuli Courtyards. Uh, well, there is a really imminent problem or crisis, if you will, at a apartment complex, um, 82 housing units, that's called Courtyard at Waipoli. And the affordability requirement for that complex expires in August of this year, which means that, and the property is up for sale as a potential visitor facility of either timeshare or condominiums. And so it means that that 82 families, some of them have already left, but even one family, not about 70 families will have to leave. And there's nowhere to go because it's so difficult to find a, an affordable place to live on Kauai. Um, and, you know, the good news is that this can be stopped, the, the eviction or displacement can be stopped if the county, because the county has a legal right to, um, the, and an exclusive right to purchase the property um, within the 10 years, which uh, is still ongoing. Okay, so the, the, it's owned now by, who owns it now? Just so uh, it's, it's owned by the developer, Kevin Shaw. And it was a zoning condition 
um, in exchange for uh, rezoning re of Agland to resort f for 750 luxury condos that's right above the Marriott on Nawili Willy Bay. So um, the developer got entitlements for 750 luxury condos. In exchange, he was required to build 82 uh, housing units. Affordable housing units. Right. Um, but now the affordability requirement expires. But with it comes the right to purchase, the exclusive right for the county to purchase. So, so what does the county have to do to purchase this? Well, uh, you know, the elected officials are the leaders of the county. The mayor is like the CEO of the county, and really it is his role to assert that legal right on behalf of the community. Because it, it will not just save the families that are there right now, but it will also help um, add to the affordability housing inventory on the island permanently. And that seems like this precious resource at this point. I mean, the, we, we just don't have those. And to, to lose 82 units for for that will they'll never come back. I mean, we have we have some other uh, photos of the of the complex, and it it seems so uh, near to jobs and and other infrastructure that it's a great place to have some affordable housing. It's an excellent place for affordable housing. It's on the main highway, next to a bus stop, close to jobs, close to services, close to schools, and. Um, it, it's, it's housing families who otherwise couldn't have find a place. Would it be necessary for the county to float bonds in order to buy it? Well, the, you, the county will have to figure out how to buy it, mm -hmm. but the state last session appropriated $500 million for affordable housing. I see. But the county has to, the county is the only one that has the right to buy it exclusively. Yes. Not the mm -hmm. state, mm -hmm. not any nonprofit. And uh, so it would be possible for the county to get the, mo the funds from the state, you think? Yes, the county oh. could apply for money. Seems like a no-brainer. Yes, or it, last session, the I was on the council, we appropriated $4 million for housing. You could, um, I proposed a charter amendment that would have earmarked a certain percentage of real property taxes. Honolulu has that provision, and with that kind of provision, you could float a bond. Mm -hmm. So there are ways to pay for it. Yes. It, it would <clears throat> be incumbent on the mayor to pull together experts to create a financing plan. Mm -hmm. But you first have to determine the price. Yes. Um, and that is between the county and the developer per the legal agreement mm -hmm. that binds both of them. Without getting too into details on that agreement, so the county, the county has until when to decide whether they're going to purchase this? Uh, the county has till the end of 10 years, so till August. Until August. So what? So between now and we're sitting here in, in the mid cl the clock April. Is, the clock is ticking. And, um, you know, they, they need to go through this process. First of all, if they can, if the mayor and the developer and the council can come to agreement on the price, that's all that it would take to determine the price. If there's disagreement on the price in the contract between the county and the developer, Kevin Shaw, then um, it, uh, there's a process for determining the fair market value. And is, has a price been set? It sounds like there well, hasn't. Actually, Mr. Shaw has done his part by offering it three times at least to the county at certain prices. And um, previous administrations have not taken up the offer. And the last offer was made to this administration, which rejected the offer at a price that was offered, which was, in my opinion, a reasonable price. And what was that price? $37 million, which is about 450000 a unit, which is, everyone agrees, about the cost to build a Sadly. unit. But it's, but it's, it's already built, so you don't have to wait for the 
four to five years of mm -hmm. getting entitlements, <coughs> finding land, and building four to, it. Four to five years. Is that uh, that's how long it would take to to rebuild th this number it's, of units? It's an average time. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, even if they don't buy it, there's we're still going to be out this many units of inventory in affordable housing for at least that long already. Um, it's a terrible loss, 82 units yeah, in a place a where people can't find units more. You know, hundreds of families are looking for a place to live. And now 82 more families, if they have to leave, will be looking for an inventory that's minus 82. So we're moving backwards. If we want to solve this affordable housing um, problem, we have to add more units, affordable units. In this case, we'll be minusing units. So with this looming um, transition in status, to put it nicely, um, what is the developer doing? I mean, are, is, it, is, is it listed? Is it not listed? The is it not allowed to be listed until the county says no or until no, August? No, there's, there's no prohibition. The county has the right, exclusive right to buy it for 10 years. The 10 years is coming to a close. The, the action <coughs> is on the county to take. The developer has actually done his part by offering it to the county. Um, the county has to assert its right to, <coughs> to purchase that property. Um, and so far, neither the council nor the mayor has made an effort toward well, that direction. I'm, I'm sure you must have spoken to one or two of the council members at least. Is well, nobody there interested? Or two what? council members um, proposed a resolution or wanted to propose a resolution that would have asked the mayor to um, find a way to purchase the units and would have asked HHFDC, the House, Hawaii Housing Finance and Development Corporation, to um, per help per the county purchase it. Uh, but the council chair did not approve that resolution on the agenda, which is unbelievable to me because it doesn't allow the issue to even come on the agenda. <coughs> and the, the, um, the, it doesn't, and the Sunshine Law doesn't allow council, more than two council members to discuss it unless it is on the agenda. So it's essentially stopping the council from doing any inquiry or problem solving. And the, count, uh, the community cannot come and testify on a subject unless it's on the agenda. So it's e essentially stopping the community from petitioning their government to, and the community, the residents have written a letter to the council and asked that the letter be put on the agenda. But so far, nothing has gotten on the agenda. So in my mind, the public has been denied their right, um, constitutionally, a constitutional right to petition their government. So the, I, I'm glad to hear that there are, there are some uh, residents who are taking an active role in this. So they are trying to get this issue on the, on the council, and they but, have, it's, yes. but they're, they're not able to because the chair of the council is refusing. Is that, do I have a, is, understand that? The chair's um, approval is required to get any matter on the agenda. And so far, that approval has not been given. So you've talked with some of the residents. I'm... Um, I, I have. The, the residents have been coming for help to whoever will listen. They've spoken to council members individually, but because it's not been agenda, they cannot speak to <coughs> the council as a body, nor can they be on the televised meetings that help inform the community about the issue. Mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, to my knowledge, the mayor has not been willing to speak to the press about it. And so um, there hasn't been the kind of community awareness or problem solving that could happen if it were, put, it were to be put in a decision making forum like the council meeting. Um, and, and so, but, you know, 
Yeah, so it's actually relying on the leadership. The elected leadership has the power, and they're essentially, the mayor in particular, is the only one who has the power to assert the contractual right of the county to buy this property, to get the developer to sit at the table, negotiate a price, go through the process of determining the price if there's not agreement, and then putting together a financing plan to pay for that <coughs> price. Is there much awareness in the community about this particular project? Well, residents uh, have written uh, guest editorials and letters to the editor. And to the credit of the local paper, The Garden Island, those have been printed. But there's been no public forum where there's um, inquiry, uh, you know, calling HHFDC, asking the mayor to come and give his position and his plan, um, or his reasons why he's not mm -hmm. doing this. Um, there's not been fact-finding. Uh, you know, and mm -hmm. there's been no chance for the residents to address the council so that the <coughs> council can see who they are. And I know we have some pictures I hope we'll show yeah. because, you know, there's Jerry Kailoa, um, there's the Medina. Mr. Medina is a bus driver. That's Jerry's um, grandson, um, Cyril, I think. And that's um, Ronald and his grandson. And I mean, they're families with children, they're retirees, elderly, um, they're workers, you know. Um, there's a manager of one of our grocery stores. Um, they're, they're just wonderful families. Now, when you, when you say residents, you're talking about residents of this complex. But what about residents of Kauai in general? Um, are they aware? Do, 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 is there any grassroots? Um... Well, the, the, because the issue has been so quiet, mm -hmm. there's, I don't know how much awareness there is. Usually, mm -hmm. the awareness begins when it's before the council, and you can hear the questions, and mm -hmm. you can hear what, <clears throat> what the options are, and right. you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. The residents have tried. Um, wherever I've spoken about it to people, um, People are like aghast mm -hmm. that this is happening. Yes. And because mm -hmm. they know they have family members or friends who have very similar situations. Mm -hmm. They know how hard it is. People want their kids to, to come home from college and they can't find housing, or they know a friend who just got noticed that the house was being sold where their friend yeah. is living. Yes. You know, that all the time. They, mm -hmm. All the time. Yeah, unfortunately. And, mm -hmm. and they know, I mean, in my church, um, one of the members during concerns raised up the issue about her child having a friend who was homeless, a child, mm -hmm. another child. Yeah. Um, it's all over. Businesses mm -hmm. have people sleeping in, you know, the right, uh, right outside their businesses. Mm -hmm. So we're all being affected, and I think yes. we all want mm -hmm. to see solutions. And mm -hmm. even for homelessness, the real solution, as they're showing a um, Hauiki Village on yes. Staten Island is permanent housing. Yes. Shelters are, are only temporary and never mm -hmm. really work. Mm -hmm. So the best practice is about um, permanent housing, and we'll be losing 82 permanent housing yes. units. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, Forever, I would assume. Yes, yes. once it's, yeah. it's out of. It, it seems to be just so particularly galling that, that when this leaves being affordable housing, which it only, it got that because he got to build that 700 luxury homes somewhere uh, by now yes. willy willy. Yes. He, already got to, he already got to make lots of money and the, on, and those... on so, uh, selling all those 750 units, this, just this 82 was only for 10 years a, a affordable housing. That... And now it's going to be not only not affordable housing, but not even housing, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. It sounds like it's going to be uh, that it's, it's zoned for resorts or timeshares or, or, or vacation rentals. It, it can become that. It is for, up for sale for that purpose. Um, it's up and, for sale. Yes, it, it's on the market for sale. He cannot sell it until the 
termination of the 10-year period, but he's preparing. <coughs> ah, he's already preparing to sell it. Well, I yeah. if, yeah. if I were well, him, I would do yes. that. Right. I mean, I really want to point out that Mr. Shaw has offered to, to the county for three purchase times. three times mm -hmm. at much lesser much less than 37 million originally. But you are correct, Kawi, that um, those 750 units are permanently luxury condos. And so the affordable housing that was done as part of the deal should have been permanent as well, because that need will be ongoing. And that was, that was an error, I believe, on the part of the county council. Mm -hmm. And that's a policy <coughs> error. We need to change that policy. And I, I did propose a change last year, but it wasn't approved by the council. So mm -hmm. this policy that has allowed this to happen is still policy. Yes. Mm -hmm. that, that developers can get uh, hundreds of units of luxury approved and only a few affordable, yes. and that only for 10 years? Is, is the policy No, that it's sometimes it's 10 years, sometimes it's 20 years, sometimes it's 30 years. It was pretty ad hoc. I think now in our, in our existing housing ordinance, it's something like 20 years or 25 years. Mm -hmm. But it's still... Still, that's not long enough. Mm -hmm. It has to be more than a lifetime. Right. No. Uh -huh. In fact, I got one 60-year change to per, in perpetuity. But that was a case-by-case -case negotiation. Mm -hmm. And it's better to have a policy, which is the general rule that everyone has to follow, no matter whose zoning appli rezoning application comes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, the, you know, in a democracy, <clears throat> um, leadership is a public trust, which means that you are elected to do something that will be on behalf of the community will be good for the community and the common good. And it's clear that purchasing this property is in the public interest. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I keep hoping and praying that our leaders will see the light and will, they, because there's still time to do this. Um, but when the leaders, whether it's intentionally or unintentionally, um, don't seem to be moving on the right path, then we are government of the people, by the people, then the people have to speak up. And it's as hard as it's been to speak up. Um, and, and people on the island should be speaking up for just getting it on the agenda. Mm -hmm. I can't believe that that's an issue. But then it's also about speaking on the subject. And I'm hoping that the community will, maybe through a show like this, um, become more aware of what's at stake and what's happening and rise up, take a stand, not just the residents, but, you know, their friends and family, their churches, their halals, their clubs, oh, yes. their workplaces, mm -hmm. because this is an issue for everyone. And I think that if it were made a homelessness issue, saying that there would be 82 more families which would be homeless, that this homelessness is a really big problem this here on this island issue. also. And so this is, it, it should be the homeless issue which would bring it up. This is a homeless issue because yes. those of the lower incomes that are living there at Courtyard at Waipoli may very well become homeless. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, that is so much stress for a family that's just trying to make ends meet, but mm -hmm. to not have a, to know that their place where they're living is coming to an end and that they have to find another place, and they're trying, they're yeah. looking, right. and there's not <coughs> options, mm -hmm. especially if you're in the lower income groups, you know? Mm -hmm. And so this is a homeless issue. This is yes. homeless prevention. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Prevention is always better. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, and even if some families leave and we purchase this, then there's some units th that may be vacant, but homeless people could of course. now mm -hmm. become. So it is a homeless issue. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. It is. Mm -hmm. so, and I, I think that we need to emphasize it's just four months away. August is only four the, months away. 
the clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. And so it's really important for the leaders to move quickly yes. because they are the only ones who can assert the county's right and um, <clears throat> make a request to the state for assistance and help. It has to be the county leaders who do mm -hmm. that. So you mentioned the HHFDC. Uh, is that, um, have you had any talks with them? Well, I understand this, they have come to inspect the units and that the governor and the head of HHFDC, Craig Hirai, want to help, but they cannot do it. Um, but I, I heard the developer has said he doesn't, the, he doesn't want to go through appraisal process that the state has to go through. And so um, the state cannot make the developer go through it, but the county can. Ah. Because the county has a legal right. They have a contractual right. Mm hmm Wow. Mm. <laughs> yeah. So the, it's, the, the buck stops there. I mean, I, I, you've said it like true. three times, three different ways in, the, in this discussion. Mm -hmm. So there's, there has to be pressure put on at the, at the county leadership level to, to have um, somebody step in and really see this as an opportunity for um, shoring up not only just these families, but affordable housing in general. This is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to save 70, 80 families, well, 82 families now, and because people could move into the vacant units, um, and to help generations because when the county or state buys it, it'll be affordable forever mm -hmm. because the county owns it. And so, you know, it will, it will have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what can people do? Are there, are, should they write the mayor? Should they write their council member? What, what should they do? Um, the, all of the above. <laughs> you know, because the state legislature could also pass a resolution um, urging HHFDC to purchase the units. They did that for um, Front Street property last legislative session, which was in a very similar situation where the affordability was going to expire. It was going to turn into market units, maybe even potentially visitor units. And thus, both the state and the House at the state legislature passed resolutions. So that could happen. Um, the council could pass a resolution if they can get it on the agenda. And the, um, the yeah. And, mm -hmm. and the, the mayor so has we're, to. We, we have run out of time, mm -hmm. and it seems that only the county, the county council, will be, has the... The mayor uh, and the council. ...have the right to do this, so that the state would need the county in order to get it. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Joanne Yukibura, for bringing this to our attention. Thank you so much. And Kaui Lucas, I'm Pearl Johnson, Thank you very much for watching.